Here's what happened yesterday on Fifth Avenue. Here, here is one of Simon and Schuster's authors showing up at his book signing on Fifth. Show him, Brian. There he is. He needs security. Here, here is a man who has sold, caused more noise for a book signing than General Schwarzkopf did. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nobody in the history of publishing has created this. There has been no author in the history of American letters that has caused this much. Who can this man be? I give you, ladies and gentlemen, and his fans are here. Wait a minute. I've got to tell them who's here. Wait a minute. Hold it. To Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Here. Yeah. Here are the stations that have been fined because they carry Howard Stern's radio program. Show them, Brian. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, this, the FCC has fined these people. Here, uh, XRK, this is your home state. Oh, this was 1989, 2000, 2000. Keep going. Show them. Uh, sh can the United States government fine a radio station for carrying a, t a radio uh, broadcaster they don't like? 125 Gs. This isn't funny. This is his home station, XRK FM, here in New York City. Howard Stern, the fart man, is being attacked. <laughs> Number rather, two. rather than Fartman, what about number one best-selling author? Yeah. Huh? Here is um, legitimacy. Yeah. Uh, number ten is uh, here. Just some of the things for those you, you know. There are some cities that don't. Can you imagine? Don't know who Howard is. Among the things you've said, among the things you've said on the air, Howard, the closest you said, the closest I came to making love to a black woman was I masturbated to a picture of Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Well, Phil, you have to speak the truth, don't you? Uh, do you have, uh, did you have sex with magic? He's got HIV. This is a song. He could have infected you and you'd be diseased. Oh, that magic when he banged you good. He didn't wear rubbers, though he knew that he should. It's tragic about magic and this awful thing. Why couldn't it have happened to Larry King? And you've said the same thing, haven't you? One more, just one more. Phil you... sings that to Marlo every night, I you... know. That. <laughs> You put me in Fisher, Stephen, shoes, boy, and I'll show you one satisfied Michelle Pfeiffer. The girl couldn't talk, she'd be so sore. Boy, her rump would be more black and blue than a Harlem Cub Scout. <laughs> uh, so I'll take okay. it out of context. So the, all right, so the, point is, so the point is what, Howard? Make your case here. Well, there's really no case to be made other than the fact that I do a radio show daily. I'm sure there are some people who have no idea who I am. There are places in the country that don't get this radio program. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the program, I think, is a humor program. I think there's a lot of people, as demonstrated by uh, this audience, that find it humorous. And I try to entertain and make people laugh. That's what we're after, Phil. And as a matter of fact, some of the shocking subjects that you do, lesbians who make love to their cats <laughs> during uh, raining sweeps, yeah. many times you do these shows, but to you, of sure. course, have a psychologist up here on the and stage that with you. Legitimizes it. Legitimizes it. If I do something for the sake of making people laugh, it seems to be a problem. It yeah. seems to be that, it's, that we can't talk frivolously about sex. By the way, all of the things that you mentioned, Phil. Right were of sexual nature. Yes. And I don't know why we're so repressed or why we're so hung up about sex in this country that, God forbid, somebody should hear a discussion about sex. What exactly would happen? We all have a penis, some have a vagina, and uh, in, fact, number. in fact, I am told that we, some 16. people have both. <laughs> and Phil's had them all on TV, right? 
My parents, you said on the air, first they gave me the genes to make me six foot five with no penis to speak of. Right. Then they stuck me in a black neighborhood. It was a traumatic upbringing to say the least. There was a time I even hit on black women. Yes. You're, you're not racist, Howard. I don't consider myself racist. I think that uh, we talk a lot about my growing up in a black neighborhood and I talk a lot about what happened to me in a black neighborhood. And uh, no, I don't feel I'm racist. I don't do. I, I don't. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not hateful of people. Uh -huh. You're number one in New York. Number one in New York. You're number one in other cities as well. In fact, uh, we beat the all-news radio station by almost two full points. How's that? Uh, Howard Stern is a Roosevelt, Long Island uh, kid. Uh, his, uh, you're married. You have three children, uh, who I assume do not listen to, your, to their father on the radio. No, I think they're too young to listen. Uh, and I think I'm a Harvard professor, Phil, by the way. 45. <laughs> That's uh, what I tell them. <laughs> Howard Stern is a graduate of Boston University. He is, uh, he is here to push the door open. Here are some of the questions we might... Uh, well, let me show you one more. Here's one that uh, uh, enraged an entire country. Filipinos are terrible people. Filipinos are the most depraved people in the world and probably worse than people from France. Parents are selling children for prostitution. You can go there and screw just about anybody. I think they eat their young over there. <laughs> what precipitated that? Yeah. I know Give that's not chance. true. Hang what on. precipitated that? Oh, we have an angry Filipino in the front row. <laughs> A little bit tense here, I understand. You know, I like doing it from a radio station. You don't get to see the angry Filipino. It's much easier. You kind of back off a little bit. Let me explain myself. Um, we had a guy come down to the station who showed us a whole uh, sort of video presentation of the various Filipino women that were available to horny white men in America. As in, uh, hi, and as it get a bride, you mean? There was uh, a get a bride thing, and it was, uh, it was actually uh, guys going over uh, with money and, uh, you know, paying for prostitution. There was a lot of that going on, and there was a report of a lot of fathers selling their young children into prostitution. We talked about it on the air. I said it was wrong. I thought Marcos was a creep, and I went on the air and said it. I thought that we were sending funds over to the Philippines. If you want to get political, we're sending funds over to the Philippines. He took all the money. He certainly didn't share it with the Filipino people. We went into the poverty and degradation that was there, and that a lot of fathers had to sell their children and eat dogs. That was it. So, and then you get a guy up front who's going to say, hey, I heard you said that about all Filipinos. And that's not what we were uh, implying. Mm. You have your, uh, uh, you, the stations that carry your show have now been fine. <laughs> Phil, I feel you're very tense. You do have to mellow out to a degree. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Tell America that it is a humor program and that many people listen and laugh at it and have a good time with it and that it's not as heavy as you make it seem. You pull out a few clips and you yeah. say, hey, he's a racist, he's a this, he's a homophobe. Uh, you, I, yeah, but you do swishy, don't you? Characters are gay... Uh... Yeah, there's a lot of stereotyping uh -huh. going on. And that is not homophobic. Uh, I don't think so. I think that if you do some stereotyping, then you get on afterwards and go, aren't we idiots? Uh -huh. We just uh, stereotyped an entire community. And I think I was one of the first people to do lesbian and gay dating game. And I, I beat you to it. Much like that you do. <laughs> and I was applauded. So the point, Howard, is... You're, uh, you're puncturing the balloon of pretense. You're, there's a lot of baloney out there, and you're here to say it honestly, and you have created perhaps the biggest stir in the history of a book signing yes. at a bookstore here in Manhattan Island. People are responding to the book. They genuinely think it's funny. I think it's a very good book. I don't think it was like a Jerry Seinfeld book, which was a... <laughs> Phil, which was a pamphlet, even you will agree. It was not quite a book. There was about uh -huh. 25 pages there filled with pictures. Uh -huh. And uh, people are excited about what I do. I think they laugh. They have a good time. Have you ever been trapped in your limousine, Phil, on your way to work, and there's nothing to do, and there's two hours to kill, and you can put on the radio and be entertained by something? And that's what you're doing. You're I think, just, yeah. I think uh, so. I hope so. Uh, Now, the, uh, the people who call uh, television shows and say, Howard Stern, the fart man, you know, like that. They call your show. Yeah. Right. Uh, you, when you hear that, yeah. when you hear that, you, you feel proud, you feel what? Uh, Phil, typically I don't get out and do a lot of these programs. I avoid the press because they usually come on like the head prosecutor, Phil. 
So what I do is I, uh, I, I lay back a little bit. So you got to get publicity some way. So it's nice that some of the listeners call in and mention my name from time to time on That's your show. That's a good yes. thing. You see that as a good thing. I see it as fun. I think it helps you with your ratings. We're in a battle here. <laughs> Phil, we're in a battle here with Oprah and Araldo. We got to get out there and pump out things, right? We yeah. got to have fun. I think a lot of people tune in just to see my name mentioned on yes. the show. Um, <laughs> your, your, mother, your mother was at the signing, was yes, she not she yesterday? Was. She's yep. proud of her son. I hope so. But yes. then again, Charles Manson's mother is running around in circles dancing the jig today. She's very proud of him as well. Um, you know, uh, where is Ronald Reagan when you need him? He wanted deregulation. I would have to think that a proud conservative like Reagan, Rush Limbaugh, and others should be four square against the FCC, fining a, private, uh, a privately owned radio station for language. I think they are. Actually, um, I think that there are a lot of people who have ignored this issue. It is a First Amendment issue. It's got to be frightening to you as well, or anybody who writes newspapers, because you do shows. I don't think they come after you, because if they went after you, it would be considered ridiculous. I don't think the FCC will go after you. No, because but there's been a lot of other people have, so don't, don't make me out there as some sort of icon who's not no, people, criticized. People have go gone ahead. after you for your advertising dollar and that kind of thing, which they, they have every sure, right to do. that's not important. All right. Go no, ahead. but they have every right to do that. <laughs> they do. It's they not do. a First Amendment issue. They do. They're saying, different hey, with the government, you Yeah, say. the government has said, hey, let's go after Howard Stern. Maybe we can solve all the problems of the world. If we go after Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. And I have to laugh at that because I look at Nazi Germany. I don't think Howard Stern was on the radio at that point. There were violent films, certainly, in Nazi Germany. Uh, not, not violent films. Uh, they probably had family entertainment day and night, a fun-loving people. And they turned out to be the most <laughs> violent society in the world. In Bosnia today, there's no Howard Stern. There's no violent films. And really, what are we talking about here? We're talking about some discussion of lesbianism? Nobody's paid a fine yet, have they? No one has paid a fine, but there's been a lot of pressure on the radio station that carries me to either fire me. You can't win this battle. You're up against a government bureaucracy. Well, it's me I here. Say that. No, I'm... you can't. There's a government here, there's me here, and these guys have egos in the FCC. This is the most attention they've ever gotten in their lives. And suddenly they say, hey, we don't want to look like we lost to some jerk like Howard Stern. And we've got to go keep going after him, keep finding his stations, make sure he doesn't get on in other markets. Make sure that the radio stations that he works for uh, are unable to buy and sell radio stations. They're going after us in a, a way that is clearly unconstitutional. No one has said we're indecent or obscene except for five guys who we don't know who they are. Speaking about... <laughs> well, what can I do about it? You know, there's not much you can do. Simon & Schuster made a decision to reprint over one half million copies of Howard Stern's book. Uh, after it was on the shelves for only a couple of hours. Simon and Schuster. Simon and Schuster? Simon and Schuster is the granddaddy, father, godmother of all of publishing. And here they are thinking possibly they have the biggest hit in their entire repertory on their hands. Well, it's a, the, it the is book the, signing. The book signing yesterday was the biggest in the publisher's history, three times bigger than Norman Schwarzkopf, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Magic Johnson. In response to whether they didn't want to publish private parts at first, here's what this publisher said. No, there was never a moment's hesitation. We actually were in heavy competition to obtain the books. One million copies of Howard Stern's private parts are in the Howard the line went down the block. If you got a picture here, show them. The line went down the block. Yeah, Howard, you are hot. Look at looky here. Uh, here's just part of the line that showed up yesterday uh, to see. That's to the line outside my house, Phil. That you just stepped up <laughs> alone. No, it's that's very exciting. What happened to the picture, Phil? What's going on here? They told me this was a professional show. I could have been Howard. on Geraldo, you know. Yeah. Howard. <laughs> Your fans are young white males, Howard. No, if you take a look at that line. Look at it. Hang on. Not necessarily. A I think no. if uh, you take a look at the uh, ratings and you take a look at that line yesterday, you, you had everybody's people. Everybody's watching you. Yeah, right? a lot of different kind of people. Yes. Howard's you your man, is he? Is he? Hi, Howard. Your hair looks great today. Yeah, thank you. you. Well, you're doing a great job, yeah. Howard. You find, you find Howard sexy? No, yes. In a certain. Wait, let yes. me, 
I was trying, I asked my father to tape this today because you said it wasn't going to be on today, but it is. Yes. And I, I wonder how you're going to reconcile with Geraldo on that. Um, <laughs> I, w I, I was listening to your show, should I come in, shouldn't I come in? It do was you, unbelievable. You like the man, do you? I no, think let me he's tell you great. First, let me make yes. He says everything that everybody wants to say, as the woman said at the beginning when she was prepping Without us. pretense, he right. cuts the baloney and gets right to it. That's and, what you and, like. And there it. are more yuppie types and more people with money that listen to him than you no. thing. Yes. And you, you love the man. Howard's your man. Yes, he is. And I'm uh -huh. not a single white male. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, he's not racist. No, he's not. Yes. He's not sexist. No. He loves women. Def I think you're absolutely gorgeous. He wants to... He, he absolutely well, what? I think he's absolutely gorgeous. You do. But I like to say, what do you think about Madonna and her attempt to um, reveal her private parts with her poorly developed sex book? And afterwards, can you sign my private parts? Yes. <laughs> Give me a chance on Madonna. Just let me pick it up. Okay. Howard, I think you're fantastic. I listen to you every morning. I'd like to know when you're going to get Richard Simmons back on the show. Richard Simmons, yes. yes. These are all good questions. Howard, I just want to say I used to work with you at WNBC, the uh, first station you came into in New York, yeah. and a lot of people think you're like totally like a jerk sometimes, but Which he's like, he's I one think of the, Phil does. You're one yeah. of the nicest guys. I, I'm just being serious. Off the air, you're like one of the nicest guys I've ever met, and really? I just got to give him a lot of credit for what he's doing, and I want to wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Howard Stern will be back. In just a moment. 150 pages. I'm throwing away the Bible and I'm raising my kids on this now. Madonna, the book. Well, listen, Madonna's yesterday's news. What she did is she burned the audience with her book. There was a big hype. Madonna's book is coming out. We saw a bunch of pictures of a woman who didn't actually look that good naked. Uh, Phil, <laughs> admit it. You know it. You know it's true. You look at the picture. Did you look at the Madonna book? Uh, yes. Were you turned on? No. No, you were not. Well, uh, but so your book will last. Hers doesn't. I don't understand. Your book will last. My book, I think, is substantial. I think there's a lot to it. I think there's a laugh on every page. It not only has lesbianism, it has my early life. It has celebrities that uh, irritate me, which you are one of them, Phil. I got it in here. Yeah, yeah. I gave God. you a little dig. I gave you a little dig. Yeah. All right. My name is Jimmy Romero, and I represent the conscience of many Filipinos uh, you've maligned, okay? Oh, yeah, one thing, one you've, you've accused us of being cannibals uh, to some extent in that, in that uh, uh, radio station. And as, as a result of that, uh, one, that's one of the reasons we sued you for... Uh, you never 20, sued anybody. We, we, we sued him for $40 Why million. Dollars. Why do you Let lie? me finish. Why Let me lie? finish, okay? Let me finish it, Why do you lie? Six, six. That's right. a lie. We Let sued you. We, uh, we filed a, a serious complaint with the uh, right, FCC. FCC. Uh, uh, you know, we also... Uh, Sir, this is America. Work, okay. Do you understand we that this also, is America? We also... All right. Okay. I understand. I understand what he's going on. Important thing it's is America. that... America. Why shouldn't you be allowed to speak in your mind? In the first place, if you, if go, you, if if you, you have a right to, uh, to malign people, we also have a right to defend ourselves. Well, let me tell you, first of, all, you don't even, first of all, you don't listen to the show. Do you ever listen to the show? Did you hear what I said on the air? Yes. No, you yes. did not. You right. never, why don't you tell the truth? Well, and why don't you face is, okay. the facts that this is America right. and that we are all allowed to speak our mind here? All right. And let me tell you something. You have a right to say, watch your mouth. You have a right not to listen to the show. But you certainly, I think should sit and listen to the show before you make a judgment. Secondly, you should respect the right of everyone to have an opinion, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. And if you had been allowed to speak up in the Philippines, you might have been able to overthrow Marcos sooner. But because... That's, that's precisely why. That, if, that's precisely why... why I'd like you to speak. That's precisely why if you go to the Philippines right now, Howard Stern, you're going to be arrested at the airport because you are persona non grata Is in that the Philippines. What you do? That's how... Is that the society okay? you want to... Why would hey, Phil? Yes. Phil, yeah, go ahead, Howard. I need a I I, I need a shot of something. You got anything backstage? I gotta I calm down. I need my Ritalin. Yes. <laughs> yes. You'll be brief, I know you. Yeah, hi, Howard Stern. Um I have one statement and one question. Uh what inspires you and what motivates you to keep doing the show after all the stuff you gotta put up with? Yeah. That's right, abuse. Yeah. Well, well, listen. Three million dollars a year. How much? <laughs> And hey, Howard, Phil, I love, at least I I don't love buy it that my you speak house and tear it down. I love it that I you say what everybody. Is it, I love it that Howard hey, Stern. 
Hey, seriously, can I answer his question? I, lo I love I, it that uh, Howard Stern says anything and everything that everybody's afraid to say on the radio. You admire the man. I admire him. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, uh, the success of the radio program, the success of the radio program really hinges on the fact that you don't sit there and say, oh my God, I shouldn't say this. What you try to do is remove the microphone from in front of your face and say, you know, why don't I say what's on my mind? And it might not always be politically correct. It might be the wrong thing to say, but I think at least you can uh, sort of be honest with the audience and say, here's all my thoughts. And you know what? If I throw a tantrum, it's okay, because all of us have done these things. And I think that makes for good radio. Sir. Um, I like to say that, um, that you're the greatest and that you tell it how it is and that you should get your TV show back. Well, I have a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, sh a TV show on E! Entertainment. It's a talk program, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very sedate program. One on one. Yeah, one on one. You I... act uh, n no uh, no fart jokes or anything no, like well, that. What I, no, a couple of fart jokes, Phil. Nothing that you and Marlo couldn't handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Howard, I'd like to say that I think you're I, I think you're outrageous. I saw you the other night on Letterman, and you said that uh, you went into radio because basically radio was a place for underachievers. Radio is and a I'd place for nitwits, is what I said. I'd like, to know to, I'd like to know if you consider yourself one of those people. Yeah, I would say I'm a nitwit. Phil, I never thought I was that talented. That's why I picked radio. Radio, the field of radio, really is about a step above circus clown. And there's not a lot of competition. You've got Casey Kasem, that big fat pumpkin head Rush Limbaugh, which you think you're all like. Howard, you have done radio? Yeah. Hey, Phil. You have met Rush Limbaugh face to face. You have met Rush Limbaugh face to face, yes? I have met the Rush Limbaugh. And let me ask you something. You said I look different in person. Is that head as big and fat in person <laughs> as it is on TV? Howard, now that you've done radio. Phil, answer the question. Yeah, I don't know. I you mean, is know. he. Were you shocked at the size of his head? <laughs> he spoke well of you, Howard. He did? Yeah. Oh, in that case, uh, he's got a very thin face. <laughs> Howard, now that you, you're the king of the radio, you've you. got your own TV show, you got a book that's going great. When's the movie going to come out? They must yeah. be looking for The it. Adventures of oh, Fart Man. What happened? No, here's the story. Uh, the reason I put out this book is because I uh, wanted to show the commercial potential of what it is I do. Uh, the radio show has always uh, cleared a big amount of money for the stations that I work for. And uh, also any uh, tapes or uh, pay-per-view specials. I have one coming up New Year's Eve. And uh, all of these have made big money. So what I have said is to the film industry, hey, here's what we do. Even the E! Show. I did the E! Show to show the network guys that I could do a legitimate television show and have big sponsors and the whole thing mm -hmm. and still pull ratings. So with the uh, film deal, I uh, have decided that uh, it's time to do a movie. I've got a bunch of scripts, and I'm looking them over. I don't think Fart Man's going to be the first movie. I think that'll be a second one if the first one is successful. And I think it will be successful. Uh -huh. So this could be $14 million. This could be a reasonably uh, expensive picture, not uh, in the epic right. sense. And in the wake of uh, Wayne's World and... Uh, yeah, I've, the... I've had interest from all of the Hollywood producers. I've gotten a lot of scripts, but I don't want to put out a piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to put out a piece of garbage book, and I don't want to put out a piece of garbage film. Uh huh. You understand that, Phil? I think I do. I think you uh, understand the world of film. Are you? Were you? Are you a nice Jewish boy from a Long Island? Yes, I am. Although I try to half Jewish, half Jewish. Half a lot Jewish. of anti-Semites in this town. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. Uh, so your mother w was. No, uh, no, no. A I'm really, I'm really uh, Jewish. I just go on the air and say I'm half Jewish because half the people in the, you know, most people hate Jews, Phil. You know that? Go ahead. You understand that? Go ahead. And uh, the, the point is that you try to hedge your bet. How do you make fun of Christians unless you say you are right. one? So I do. But, <laughs> Phil, you got me there. Did you, uh, liar. did you... Uh, you got to hedge your bet. Did you observe the... High, do you continue to observe the Holy Days? And, uh, As a matter of fact, I'm fasting now since Yom Kippur, Phil. <laughs> I need a, I need so you don't? Yeah. You don't? You're I, not, do not, I am not uh, super Not religious. a practicing Jew, so not, to speak. Not a practicing Jew. Uh -huh. Never dabbled in Satanism either. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of thing, despite what people say. Do you, be you believe in God, Howard? Um, you know what? I'm afraid to say I don't. I, uh, I probably think that when you die, you lay in a box and the worms eat you. <laughs> That's probably what you And think. you lay there and, you know, you, you wait for an afterlife, you wait for things to happen, but I don't think it ever happens. But uh, I'm afraid to say I don't believe in God because with my luck, I will die and there'll be a God and he'll say, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Get you. you went on the air and said there was no God. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes, I do. Howard Stern is on the line. Are you there? Sure am. I what? just want to thank Howard for a sensational book. The whole bit with uh, the lesbian first encounter was just incredible. Thank you. My husband, Rob, has finally turned me into a fan. Howard, I don't know how he did it, but I think you have a lot of charm. 
Thank you. Well, I'll tell you something. A lot of people tune into my radio show, Phil. Yes, I and, it, and immediately they are disgusted. And what it is, after a while, I grow on them like a fungus. <laughs> you need to listen to the... I'm curious, Phil, do you listen to the show? I must not tell a lie. You do not, do you? I listen to Imus. You listen to him. Oh! Let me ask we'll you give you a chance. Let me ask you something. Let we'll me give you a chance to ask me something. We're still, believe it or not, a commercial television program, right. and we'll be back in just Aww. a moment. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am, you wanted to say. Hi, I just wanted to tell you, it's my birthday today, and I couldn't think of a more entertaining way to spend my time. I think in this age of political correctness, I think people need to realize there is freedom of speech, and if they don't like what they hear, they can just change the channel. And I think we need to keep that. Yeah. Hi, Howard. Um, congratulations on your new book. I'd just like to know, where do you meet these people for your show, for example, like the KKK guy? Like, where, where do they come from? You gotta guard those people because after they're on my show, Phil takes them and puts them on his show. It's, it's a very competitive thing. Yeah. Uh, these are people that uh, we come across. We started calling a Ku Klux Klan phone line and we thought the guy was genuinely interesting. What a character. And we, uh, of course, thought, in fact, I put him on my TV show, my old TV show first, and I thought he'd be a great center square for Hollywood squares. Wasn't uh, Paul Lynn's just kind of boring, Phil? Yeah. So I put him in a center square and I surrounded him by black people and let the fireworks begin. <laughs> this is very good. Yes. Hi, Howard. Uh, do you ever think of yourself as a martyr? Think of himself as a what? A martyr. 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 Well, as you know something, I never got into radio or any of this to be the First Amendment poster boy, but uh, I do feel like I'm being persecuted by the government. I think, if anything, the government has a lot of shows they can go after, this one included, but they are afraid to go after these kind of programs because they'd be laughed out of business. So they go after me because I'm sort of a joke, it's convenient, it's easy, I'm easy to pick on. Do you expect your case, this uh, challenge, to go... The United States Supreme Court could consider the case of Howard Stern versus the FCC. Now, wouldn't that be something? I would have to believe that uh, they would find me uh, innocent in terms of the fact that the show is not indecent or obscene. I would believe that because uh, they say you're supposed to go by the community standard. That's how we judge whether something's indecent or obscene. And we all know that we live in a community where priests rape young boys, Phil, mm -hmm. and where there are murders on the street every day. So certainly me talking about penis will not uh, shock anyone in this community. I'm sure well, of that. <laughs> Let me get it in before the show's over, Howard. You've come a long way without my defending you, but I want to say one, uh, God bless Joan Rivers for her early and courageous and upfront support of you. I think the FCC's notion of finding stations that carry your show, as you might say, sucks. Right. I don't think it's a good idea. I agree with you that the, uh, I think you make it easier for other people to puncture the uh, balloons of uh, pretense. I do think we have a media that can be very reverent and passive and go along. And I think guys like you make it easier for guys like me to be just a little more outrageous. Thank so you. hooray for you, Howard. Don't stop. Phil, Phil, let me say something. <laughs> Phil. Sir. Yes. Howard. Come down here. I'm going to kiss you on the lips. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Thank you, Phil, for saying that. Phil. Yeah. Um, on the lips from this one. Uh, you, know, you go back there, you old bag. What's the matter? Right. Howard Stern. What's that to love about Howard Stern? We'll be back with the number one bestseller in America, Howard Stern. Just a moment. Oh. 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 Oh.
For a transcript of Donahue, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Or call 303-831-9000. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. I don't like him because I think that he's a very bad, if this is the future, and if these young people laud and extol Howard Stern, then God pity our future. He's a very bright man, and if he's lowered himself to this kind of theatrics, it's a shame that this is the only way he can get talent across. Sir, you want to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, Phil, for saying that to Howard about uh, you think that it sucks. All right, guys. Uh, Howard. <laughs> I've been listening to you for five years. My son was four when I started listening to you. At nine years old, his eyes still haven't exploded in his head from anything that's come out of your mouth. I think you're great, and I think this whole FCC crap is garbage, man. Thank you. I'd just like to say that you make it easier for everyone to question power, just question authority, and then... Uh, Very good point. I don't want you to fade away like Andrew Dice Clay. All right, I'll keep trying. <laughs> Well, I've been around yeah. for a bunch of years, Phil. I've been around listen, for... I've been doing the show for... on the bathroom floor like Lenny Bruce. Uh, you are drug-free, aren't you, Howard? Yes, I am drug-free. You're free. able to say that? You would be willing to... Be I would take to... a drug test for you, Phil. That's good to know. I am drug-free. Very good. But I've been uh, in the business for 15 years, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, professional radio, maybe 20 years. I don't even know how long it is at this point. But, uh, you know, in terms of the show staying topical, and it brings up Andrew Dice Clay or something like that, who I think is very funny, I, uh, the show is topical. It's based on what goes on in the news and what's happening every day. So I think the show can continue forever. For as on long your as we TV want to. show, you suggested that Pee Wee Herman ought to stand up, and play with himself, and give it to the audience right in the face. <laughs> Phil, let me tell you something. Howard. Phil, have you ever been to a porno theater? Howard. Phil, answer the question. Have you ever been to a porno theater? I uh, yes, I have been. To what a movie? I've seen been to a theater. I've been to. A... You watch porno? I've seen porno. Movies, when have you yes. seen porno? <laughs> What have you seen? I've, at seen home? I've seen them here in the office. No, I'm saying, at the office, you We've watch porno? We've done programs on but porno. But you watch porno. You enjoy porno. I have seen porno. All right, I've been to porno theaters. If Pee Wee was sitting behind me while I was trying to watch a movie, I yeah. don't think it's appropriate. You know, people gave him, you know, people let him get away with this. I felt Pee Wee should have gone to jail, and I'm being very serious. Just sitting in a movie theater, a guy is fooling around with himself, and for God's sakes, I don't want garbage all over the back of my head. <laughs> who wants that, Phil? Phil, who wants it? Should. Who wants that? Are you there? Uh, you wanted to say caller. Howard. Yes. I got a question for you. What is it? If you it? had to choose between Madonna, Connie Chung, and downtown Julie Brown to have an affair with, who would it be, and what would you make them wear? Uh, it would be uh, downtown Julie Brown, and I would make her wear a bustier with no panties. <laughs> Are you there, caller? You're not there. Phil, it's amazing uh, that I had an answer for that, wouldn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> Here's the question. Does, should the government have the power to take a guy like this off the air, either by finding the stations that carry him, how much free speech do you want in the land of the First Amendment? Hey, and what happens if we take him off the air? And as Howard and his fans might want to know, who's next? Phil, I would Howard? ask the Filipino guy. I think he'd give us the best answer. I really do. <laughs> He's made the most sense here today. Uh, are you there, caller? I'm glad you Thank waited. You. you wanted to say. Go ahead. Hi, Phil. One second. Just one second. Yes. I'll give you a chance. I promise chance. I will. Sit down. Sit down. Is there a caller there? Yes, I'm here, Phil. I, yes. Hi, Howard. I'm a 31-year-old married female, and yes. I, I adore Howard. And although I don't always agree with everything he says, um, it's you know it's a free country, and he can say what he wants, and yeah. I value his opinion. Here's another one, caller. Can you hear me? Yes. He talked about his wife's miscarriage, and yes. you said you'd take a picture of the baby so his grandparents could see it. <laughs> My in-laws always wanted uh, grandchildren, and I disappointed them. We had the miscarriage, and I thought if we took a picture of the miscarriage, at least they'd have something to show the friends. <laughs> Do I hear a dissent? Wow. No. Is there anybody here who... Uh, Phil, I'll give I you always had that I effect found. on people on, who just like a me. Second. eventually you, turn them off. I don't have a question about that, but um, I'm originally from Philadelphia, yeah, yeah. and I watched the death... <laughs> yes, you watched what? I watched the death of DiBella, and yeah. I was wondering which uh, shock jockey we're going to go after next. Well, to tell you the truth, Phil, there are many... Uh, you know, we're on in uh, 16 cities now, right. and there are many different disc jockeys that we go after. We want to be number one in any given market. 
So Good for you. Any 16 markets. You were canceled in my hometown of Cleveland, do I understand? Chicago, Chicago, Ch not Cleveland. Doing well were, in Cleveland. Oh, you're canceled in Chicago? Yes. Uh, I just want to know if it's really true that uh, Vibrator was instrumental in saving your marriage. Phil, that's why the success of the book can be explained. I do talk about my sex life. Phil, one of the things I talk about in the book is my sex life with my wife, and I'm very honest about it. Very my good. wife isn't thrilled about it. Uh, but this is something that I think most celebrities or people on the radio would not talk about. You, you, for example, would never admit to using a vibrator with your wife, true? Yes. <laughs> that's probably true. I wouldn't. You no. would not. Uh, what do you have? The film? Is this on the street? Oh, your wife, uh, is she speak on this tape? Let's see, Mrs. Stern. Show them, Brian. Right here. I tied my wife up one night. Yeah. I don't mind telling Did you what like I do. Did she like it? She whined and complained that she couldn't move and whined and screamed, and I untied her. But the whole idea of tying her up was so that even if she complained, she had to stay yeah. tied up. Right. When Howard starts talking about your private life, your sex life, mm -hmm. does that, does that, embarrass you? Sometimes it gets to me, it depends. You know, some certain things are exaggerated and certain things are taken out of context, but you know, I let him have a good time with it. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> what a lovely woman! And, th and you have three daughters. I have three daughters. You live with four women. Yes, I do. What a wonderful, lovely, uh, educated, beautiful, sexy young woman you're married to. Yes, I have. Met, I met my wife when I uh, was in college. I've been with her for 19 years. I have not had sex with another woman for 19 years, despite the obvious temptation. <laughs> and uh, yeah. she stuck with me as I went around from town to town, uh, honing when my radio skills and getting fired from various stations. She followed you. Yes, she followed you. And, and not many women would do that. She stuck through with me through uh, through thick and thin. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Yeah, Howard. With so much negativity that you spew on a daily basis, aren't you afraid that it's all going to come back to you in some horrible form? Darling, it already has. I haven't been with a different woman in 19 years. <laughs> How much more negativity do you want? I listen to you every morning, and I never realized that you had such a fascination with black women. Could you go on? I grew up that? in a black neighborhood. I did not have the uh, chance to make love to a black woman. I would have liked to. I'm very attracted to black women, but black women saw me as a joke, as most white women did, too. So... Uh... <laughs> And, uh, I never got the opportunity to make love to a black woman. I thought it would have been a little different, a little more exotic, a little bit uh, wild, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what would have happened? And uh, where's your bathrobe today? My bathrobe is not here. Phil wanted me dressing uh, in a conservative way, which right, I've done. Yeah. Uh, I personally just don't like you at all and don't listen to you. Thank I you mean, very but much. You sure take it off the radio. Hey, let me tell you something. Go ahead. But you shouldn't be taking off the radio. What you want to say, you can say. I mean, it's my right to turn you off. That's very yeah. good. I thank you for your time. I just yes. wanted to say I listen to you every day. I can't imagine mornings without you. And also, <laughs> you wanna, yeah. would you tell us about your pay-per-view special? Excuse, excuse your me? Your pay-per-view special. Oh, pay -per -view? New Year's Eve, I'm having the Miss Howard Stern contest. I want to make it an annual event. It's going to be big. Also, Jessica Hahn, I believe, and Malika Kinnison might be kickboxing. Sam Kinnison's widow. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be wild, Phil. I hope you'll be there. This is Howard Stern, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> popularity and this power unless there's a deep consciousness behind it. If you don't like them, you don't have to listen to them. They should have Zeus and then a god Howard. This woman I met at my book signing, she got very upset and started crying when she couldn't stand near me, Phil. So that's, oh, that's well, really here, amazing. Here she is. Here, here is uh, Howard Stern appearing on the MTV Awards. Watch this. Enter the fart man. And gentlemen, fart man! Tell my children I'm a Harvard professor. Yes, <laughs> sir. Howard, give the gentleman a chance. My name is Antonio Flores. I'm a Philippine attorney. Come on now. And I'm also a lawyer in New York City, a licensed lawyer. Good. Howard, I'll tell you what. My associate was the one who prepared the federal suit against you. 
But if you say something about Marcos, I agree with you. I, but when you say this, those things against the Filipino people, I entirely disagree with you. And this, sir, now, I will explain. tell you what, Howard. Okay. If you said all those things against the Filipino people and you said them in the context of a joke, and then now you will retract it, I will see to it that I will not personally file the suit against you. All if right. you will retract it in this program with these people all around... Retract his derogatory retract comments it. about Filipino and people. Sir, yeah. I must we tell will you something. I must tell you something. No, no, listen I to me. Never, no, no, you, yeah, you do not, you are not a listener of the show. Oh, yeah. And what I said, you would agree with. You know there are many problems in your country. And you know what's, that's why you're here because there are tremendous amount of problems in your country, and that's what I was pointing out. I didn't say that all Filipinos were this way, and I can't retract something I didn't say. If I said something no, wrong, I would retract what I need to say is that And I'll take it up with you any time, man, Just but I don't, know, I don't know what else to say that to they, you. Those you know? were said in a, in a yeah. jokingly manner. It does. I understand your yeah. point. If yeah. I could just have a moment of yeah, your yeah. time. I appreciate okay. very much uh -huh. your indignation. And, and no American is going to quarrel with your right to be really upset. Yeah. Come here the, and give me a hug. The question is this. Come here and give me a hug. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. A hug, please. A hug, please. Yeah. A hug. Yeah. A hug. What we want to know is that uh, he Very has to say, apologize to the Filipino race. He, they have? would like you to apologize 45 apologize. for saying the oh. Filipinos are terrible people. Oh. Filipinos are the most depraved I, people that, in the world what I said. and probably what worse I said. than people from France. Uh, yeah, Parents well, are France selling children story. That I did say. Uh, for prostitution. You can go there and screw just about anybody. I think they eat their young over there. Do you want to apologize for this right now, Howard? Um, I don't want to apologize for something that I did not say and what you're taking out of context. I said it was not all Filipino people. I saw a tape of what people were selling their children over in the Philippines and I came out against them as you would too. I know all you guys would come out against right. that. We know you have an image to uphold, but we want to know why you hide such beautiful blue eyes. Yeah. Because I've been up since four in the morning and they're not blue, they're bright red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Howard, you truly are the king of all media. I just want to know what your opinion on Beavis and Butthead is, since they're supposed to be turning down the show due yeah. to the violence. I think it is ridiculous that uh, I saw there was a statement issued by MTV. Pro MTV is probably a lot smarter than I am, Phil. They go on, they say, oh, uh, people are complaining? Well, we're going to look into the problem, we're going to solve it. I, I, on the hand, say there's no problem. I'm not solving anything. But uh, the Beavis and Butthead thing is ridiculous. Uh, we need more parental supervision in this country. A five-year-old shouldn't be watching Beavis and Butthead if the parents don't want him to. And, you know, the whole deal. I just, wanted, I just wanted to ask you, where's your other half, Robin, today? Where's Robin? Yeah, yeah. Partner, are you? Yeah. Hey, one second. We'll be back to talk to Robin in just a moment. You are Robin. You're on the air every day with Howard. Uh, not a few people of uh, color think he's racist. He's making fun of black people. To those people, you would say. Don't listen if you don't like it. Yeah. Uh, and and what, this kind of humor in no way continues to promote stereotypes of black people or anything like that. No. I don't think that people get their opinions from Howard Stern. I think people have their opinions and they react from those opinions. Very well done, Robin. Howard Stern's book is titled Private Parts. And we ask you to join me in thanking the Fart Man for... A
uh, caller think he's racist, he's making fun of black people, to those people you would say. Don't listen if you don't like it. Yeah. And, and what, this kind of humor in no way continues to promote stereotypes of black people or anything like that. No. I don't think that people get their opinions from Howard Stern. I think people have their opinions and they react from those opinions. Very well done, Robin. Howard Stern's book is titled Private Parts. And we ask you to join me in thanking the Fart Man for... A Can you hold them up with your tickets? Yay! <laughs> the other side. Oh, no, wait, let's put it closer. Let's put it right here. Hey, man. 